Alrighty, so we are going to be playing Sherlock Holmes The Awakened. This is the remake uh, of the original uh, Sherlock adventure game um, that was released, I think, in like 2004 on PC, if I can remember correctly. Something like that. Uh, this game was remade uh, by Frogwares, a Ukrainian developer, during the uh, ongoing uh, Russian-Ukrainian conflict and uh yeah this game seems like it's gonna be absolutely banana pants insane so we are we are going to play it so you might notice uh i have a continue right here already uh on the screen uh the reason for that being i got in game to test my settings once but i skipped all of the cutscenes so i have no idea what the dialogue actually was and i have no idea what this game is even really like i have no clue if it's going to be like uh sherlock holmes chapter one or anything else so uh yeah so we're gonna hit new game previous uh saves are gonna be overwritten and we are playing on the Master of Deduction difficulty, just like we did on Sherlock Holmes Chapter 1. I am sure it will be just as frustrating. I'm so excited. <laughs> hey Ben, welcome to the stream. So just like with Fallen Order, we're playing with a mod that allows me to play an ultra wide because the game doesn't normally support it. Apparently it works okay, but I'm sure it will add some goofiness. Watson, would you kindly close the door behind you so that we can limit the price of your carelessness to merely hours of work rather than days? My apologies, Mr. Holmes. I found myself rather <laughs> taken aback. <laughs> I saw tidier houses in war-torn Afghanistan. Are those my surgical needles? I ran out of tax and the matter required immediate attention. Was that my <laughs> supper? Plainly not, for I was the one who ate it. Hmm, I set it aside for this evening. And for that, I am grateful. Is that my bed? Watson, since you've proven yourself a master of observation, might I ask you to apply your skills to a more pertinent question? Namely, the whereabouts oh, of today's newspapers. Oh, man. They are the key to everything. The newsboy is usually reliable. Medically speaking, I often find that the key to everything is good sleep. In a bed. Your papers are here, on the table. Let us see what the postman brought today. <laughs> so it's good to know that Sherlock has not changed at all in terms of how insufferable he was in Chapter 1. Uh... <laughs> uh John clearly has changed a little bit. This is, of course, the real John Watson, unlike John Sherlock's imaginary friend in, in Chapter 1. Uh, however, you know, if you thought they were the same person, uh, I would not blame you, because the only difference is that this John kind of has some wrinkles and uh, a mustache. <laughs> All right, so we still have, like, Sherlock mode that we can go into to see stuff I'm trying to see if there's any way that we can ping the environment like we could but I just feel like I haven't unlocked that feature yet I'm close I know it I just need one more piece to crack the case all right what's this all say Lord Robert robbed uh, leader of the opposition loses art collection wolf in a pig's clothing policeman denies murder allegations stabbed in the back British something found dead on Cordona. Ah. So he's still looking into cases on Cordona. I'm just trying to see what we can interact with. There's a newspaper. Oh, that wasn't the one I wanted to read, though. All right, so it has the same clue finding mechanic as chapter one. All right, London Advertiser, September 28, 1882. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps during a recent visit to London by Swedish Princess Ildur. 
uh, chief among the scandals was the embarrassment of the British diplomatic corps as a result of the unexplained disappearance of Princess Ildor's personal bodyguard. The longtime member of her inner circle took the opportunity to explore London while off duty and never returned from his late night promenade. A spokesman for the police assures the advertiser that they are confident the bodyguard will be located, as he is a striking representative of the Scandinavian people. A man like that gets noticed, whether by his peers at the gentlemen's clubs or fair nightingales who comfort them. I'm sure he gets noticed by the peers at the gentlemen's clubs. All of it uninteresting. All right, what is this? Uh, one thing I noticed right away is that the controls are surprisingly... Uh, Surprisingly responsive. Your order from Barnes Bookshop has arrived, Doctor. Barnes that was an issue. On delivering the books to our door, even though we could easily walk to his shop. That's good service. Yeah, that was admittedly an issue in Chapter One, but granted, I was playing on PS5. Where here, I'm playing on PC. Another letter from Werner. I never reply, but they keep coming. Okay, so they brought Werner Vogel back. Interesting. <laughs> I don't see the strand. Where is it? Pardon me? I am on the precipice of uncovering a pattern of crime across London spanning many months and involving many men. The missing paper cannot be a coincidence. That's <laughs> preposterous. My dear fellow, life is infinitely stranger than anything which the mind of man can invent. Well, life used your newspaper to wipe its posterior, so after that unpleasant discovery <laughs> this morning, I disposed of it. But in lieu of the strand, perhaps I can deliver you something equally tantalizing. I have just returned from a patient of mine, Captain Stemwick, who... No, no, that will not do. Grab your coat, Dr. Watson. Let us hope nobody has collected the dustbin. Oh, what a gift. <laughs> so I think that was the thesis statement of the game, is that life is stranger than one can, can assume. All right. Uh, we have the same running controls. Still have that. Doesn't seem like pinging works anymore, so I can't use L1 yet to ping my environment and see all the interactables. But granted, we're playing on like the Uber difficulty for mastermind geniuses because I've got a good I've got a good brain. I'm gonna solve all the mysteries. So should be fine. Raph says, Sherlock says that phrase all the time in the books. I am uh I am not uh I'm not surprised by that. I just think that the placement of it here is maybe the thesis statement of the game. Uh, ben says, uh, one thing I noticed, the lip sync is a little bit janky. Yeah, this is a, this is a Euro jank game through and through. Okay. Oh, wow. We have a different map. This is fascinating. Oh man. If the map in this game is going to be better than chapter one, I'm going to be so excited. All right, let's look at our evidence. So we have to pin this one so that we can see stuff on the map. Watson brought the morning post, but the strand is missing. He disposed of it before entering the building because the pages were soiled. There's still a chance it might be found in the dustbin. We have a book from Barnes. Among our morning deliveries is a book for Watson. It was from Mr. Barnes, the bookseller, who prefers to do deliveries himself. Attached to the book is Barnes' business card, which includes the address of his store just around the corner. Tensions between England and Sweden are running high after a series of unfortunate mishaps. Oh, we already read this. Oh, oh my God. We have all of our outfits that we bought in, in chapter one. Look at this. I guess they just gave us all of the possible outfits. <laughs> That's awesome. I love that. All right, Sherlock's overcoat, cool and warm. That's kind of clever. No elbow patches yet. Vishvanka. Like everything Ukrainian, bold, durable, and unbeatable. <laughs> All right, uh, we'll put on our, our trusty wind coat. Ooh, spooky. Uh, it told me to use right bumper to get through here, so that's an issue in the tutorial. It says use right bumper to, to go through the tabs, but uh, we're not going to do that because that's not what you need to do. We have the makeup system. We have the, the hair system. Give them long sideburns. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Yeah, I guess this coat's nice. 
It's not really a raincoat, so we'll wear this one. Yeah, see, it says, so navigate to the wardrobe tab with RB. Oh, I see what it's saying. Is there anything in here I can interact with? I want to make sure that there's no uh, doors we can open. All right, so I don't want to get too ahead of myself here, but the game already feels significantly better than chapter five or chapter one. Uh, granted, again, I was playing chapter one on PS5, so. <laughs> Uh, ben says, I assume Sherlock Holmes is an interest for me. Uh, not necessarily in the literary sense. Um, I mean, I've read a lot of Sherlock, but uh, we just, one of the first games I streamed on the channel was Sherlock Holmes Chapter One, and it was a crazy video game that was just unhinged in every respect. And I, uh, I told myself we would play more of them because <laughs> they are a long running series. You were mistaken, Dr. Watson. The paper was indeed dirty, but not how you implied. It's potting soil. Oh, potting soil. Intriguing. Oh, okay, I can actually hold it to inspect. A cactus spine. If it gets in your skin, it's awfully tricky to remove, and when laced with poison, the perfect assassination tool. <laughs> Sherlock is unhinged. The conspiracy is real. Someone tried to poison me. Poison? You? That's madness. It is madness, John. You are correct. Blue says uh, the first one was amazing. Yeah, it Get was Get your certainly coffee amazing. Here. Sorry, Mr. Holmes. I just sold my last paper. Glassed. Then why are you still here? Boss pays by the hour. No sense in returning early. I love this child. <laughs> that was great. All right. Uh, what were today's headlines? Any breaking news today? The dog accident. It's the talk of the town. Yes, yes. Besides the tribe on the front page, anything about burglaries? I'm not sure, sir. You're a bright child. I presume you see everything that goes on around here? Nothing gets past me, mister. Then tell me, <laughs> did you notice anyone suspicious at my door this morning? Hmm, like the man with your newspaper? Precisely. What do you know? I know the value of a shilling. Dr. Watson. Cool, now I can take the day off. <laughs> uh, I love this money-grabbing child. Uh, Raf says they got a kid to actually sound like a kid in the remake. Yeah, but he looks like a 40 year old man <laughs> All right uh, Tell me about the man at our doorstep. Can you describe the man you saw? He was carrying a lot of books up to his chin They were uh -huh. heard of a well-read assassin books can deceive hence the appeal of disguises Did you see what he was up to? Nah, not really. I saw him approaching your house, but I had a customer. Then there's a loud bang. I ducked down. Not because I was scared, because I wasn't. I had to protect the merchandise. <laughs> and all I could see was him kneeling at your door. Ah, uh, so it's going to be the bookseller, right? Which way did he go? Not sure. I was distracted by customers. Sorry. All right. You earned your shilling. That'll be all. Thanks, Mr. Holmes. Maybe I could be your eyes and ears. If you have more shillings. Oh, I love this kid. Oh, a real, Get a real strand. rabble rouser. <laughs> All right. We have our mind palace, right? So cactus spine potentially poisoned. Uh, the missing copy of the strand was in the bin with a cactus spine stuck in a sheet. Such spines are very tricky to remove once embedded in the skin, making it the perfect assassination tool if dosed with poison. The rest of the newspaper is damp and dirtied with potting soil. If this were chapter one, we'd probably have to do one of those annoying, uh, like, puzzles where we figure out what the thing on the the strand was. But since it's not here, I'm going to assume that mechanic is not in the game. Uh, I'm going to pray that that mechanic is not in the game. All right. Watson brought the morning's post. Disposed of it. It was indeed in the bin. So it's going to be Barnes. Barnes is the guy that I think. Uh, book from Barnes. Is that the only Mind Palace clue we have so far? It seems like it, yep. 
So let's look really quickly. Book from Barnes. The strand is missing. Oh, okay, so this is how I connect them. I see. Barnes, the local bookseller, ruined the paper. Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. <laughs> the newsboy said the suspicious man was carrying a stack of books. And this morning, Mr. Barnes, the local bookseller, delivered a novel for Dr. Watson. Cactus spine for assassinations, a loud bang, a visit to Barnes is in order. All right, so oops, uh, this is a dialogue pin. We're going to need to do that to talk to Barnes, but we should be able to do this. All right, let's look at our map. Okay, that's where we are. Where do we think Barnes would be? Guess we just gotta look around for it. Let's have a, a quick jog, shall we? How spooky! Look at this poster. What is it even advertising? <laughs> Are you able to help me? As much as I'd like to help you, I know nothing about this. Alright. <laughs> there we go. Let's look around, huh? So Arthur Ignatius Conan Doyle. Impressive stature, strong gaze. I think this man deserves a knighthood. <laughs> How can you be so sure? On rare occasions, Watson, it can suffice to trust one's gut. All right, two books for the price of one. New books in the store, Charles Dickens, M. Gogol, Edgar Allan Poe. That would be cool. It would be cool to play a Sherlock Holmes game that's like, that's like heavily influenced, not by uh, Lovecraft, but by Edgar Allan Poe. I'm just looking around here, seeing that stuff. I wanna see what's around. This environment so far is so much nightish, nicer than Cordona was on PS5, at least. I'm not really here to just complain about the PS5 port, but. Sorry, sir. Can't help you. Let's look at her frame rates. Oh yeah, yeah. Forty ninety can handle this game just fine. <laughs> Ben's is not gonna lie. This Sherlock seems like a total ass to be around, bro. You have no idea. <laughs> is this Barnes? Okay. Do you even have enemies Ooh. that would want to kill you? Okay, perhaps from Cordona. All right, so this is the, isn't this a Sephirot, right? Is that right? It's a, it's like a Gnostic thing. That's cool. Why does, why does the bookseller have like Gnostic religious things on the walls? There's a dog. There's a dog in here. I didn't see it. Is it John panting? <laughs> Is it upstairs? Am I hearing it through the wall? Got newspaper ink. Oh, he tripped probably, right? Let me look at the leg. There we go. High heels, wants to look taller. Blackmail victim or workaholic. <laughs> I, I love how unhinged Sherlock's mind is. He wears high heels to look taller or stronger, presumably to deter future violence. Mr. Barnes has developed a limp, and has large bags under his eyes, the result of long hours of intense work. He is not very confident and tries to appear taller by wearing high heels. It seems unlikely that such a person would be involved in a murder plot, even if the ink on his hands suggests he is the one who soiled the newspaper. Mr. Barnes, a word. <gasps> oh, for goodness sake. <laughs> who, uh, who goes there? Sherlock Holmes. Now will you please... Mr. Holmes, golly, I did not see you coming. <laughs> Would you care to answer some questions for me? Well, I wish I could, but I am deep in the weeds with work. How about we uh, reschedule? 
in a month or two. Come now, Mr. Barnes. It will only take a moment. <laughs> really deep in the weeds with... <laughs> he just is trying to hide from Sherlock. Well, help to any book, just take me to pay later. I trust you, Mr. Holmes. Barnes doesn't seem like himself. Why is he acting this way? You're asking the right questions, Doctor. Let's find a way to coax him out. Is he in this to look around? All right. Catalog of exotic plants on Barnes' counter. The name of the catalog reads, Everlasting Plants for an Everlasting Love. Interesting. Is he high? <laughs> Spooky text. What's this? Basics of cryptoanalysis, cryptography in Egypt. It appears Barnes has an interesting hobby. Can't look in there. Anything in here that I can play with? Oh yes, perfect. The power of love, blood, and mandrake. Oh, this is the the text, the witch text from the sex cult mission in chapter one. That's pretty goofy. In the language of Mycroft's secret agents, it's a sign. Dried flowers are replaced when the job is done. I wonder who the recipient is. This woman at the I flower shop. <laughs> All right, let's look around. Doesn't seem to be anything there. What's it trying to get us to pay attention to? The finest view London has to offer. There we go. An improvised stand, but it does make the flowers more visible. He's trying to get someone's attention. Huh. The weather is dreary, isn't it? To be fair, my flowers could use the rainfall. I should have worn something warmer. People don't tend to come out for flowers when it rains. Perhaps I should try selling door to door. Hello there. What's your name? Lily. I know. Not very original. <laughs> Have a look at my flowers. They will not bite unless you touch their thorns. All right. Oh, unless you touch their thorns. Cactus spine potentially poisoned. Have a look at my flowers. They will not bite unless you touch their thorns. All right. So I at least know that he's he interacted with Lily at some point uh, because of the cactus spine, the fact that they have thorns. Uh, where is this crypto, uh, exotic plants catalog? I'm trying to see, uh, cryptozoology was a thing. Oh, there's the dog. It's on the floor right here. I didn't even see it. But I can't hear you. Please come back later. All right. Uh, let's look at our map real quick. Barnes Bookshop, 22 Baker Street. Everlasting plants for an everlasting love. Mr. Barnes is involved in the scheme. We knew that. Dead flowers on display. So this is pinned right now. Oh, it means that we can actually do like an, a deep analysis of it, I think, right? There's the strand for the day, Killing Tempest, okay. All right, so with dead flowers on display, let's go outside real quick and, and look. Is there anything we can do here? I guess we can go inside, right? Nope, okay then. Here we go. Encouraging people to stop and smell the roses. Our national emblem. God save the queen. Haha. <laughs> Familiar spine. Is this what I found in my dustbin? It is. The pot is damaged. 
The blow was severe, but softened by something. <laughs> it cracked because he dropped it when he was looking at it, and he feels embarrassed. <laughs> It must take patience and care to produce a bloom so beautiful. I imagine so. I merely sell them. <laughs> All right, so we've got a horny bookseller. Can tickle your fancy, Mr. Holmes. She looks familiar. She looks like the actress that plays, uh, what's her name? Honoring deceased husband. Okay. Clean boots. Her eyes constantly dart around the street, seemingly in search of something or someone. Perhaps she's waiting for someone. Is she still grieving? Hmm. Wearing makeup. She's ready to move on. While Miss Fleming cherishes the memory of her departed husband, she is trying to move on. As suggested by her makeup and nice outfit, perhaps she is dressing to attract someone's attention, or simply because she's learned to love herself again. We'll definitely pick this one. You look particularly lovely today. Is there a reason? Does a woman need a reason to look or feel beautiful? No, but your distant look suggests you seek one man's gaze in particular. Who told you that? Nobody. Merely a keen eye and some simple deduction. Well, I'll kindly ask you to keep your keen <laughs> eye to yourself, Mr. Holmes. <laughs> what an insufferable asshole. All right. Uh, we need to put evidence. What do you make of the flowers in Barnes' shop window? Well, they could use a bit of water. Do they mean anything to you? Mean anything how? I'm not sure I follow, Mr. Holmes. Why do you think they're there? Are you suggesting... The flowers are for me. It seems likely, does it not? Oh, I hope you're right. All right. Uh, where is it? Exotic plants I'm catalog. I can't help with that, Mr. Okay, so this is this is just to show them all the evidence we have. Thing. I don't know anything about this. Sorry. Cactus spine. Where is it? Are you sure you're asking the right person? I'm just a flower seller. Are you familiar with Mr. Barnes? Yes. No. Not really. Well, in a way. What on earth does that mean? I know who he is, of course. But we haven't shared much more than a look. A look? Yes. Each morning I go for a walk in the park with my dog. And most days I spot Mr. Barnes there with his new puppy. So we see each other. Actually, we once met briefly while our dogs played. He was quiet and seemed unsteady as he approached. But since then... We've never spoken. I so he's smitten with her. <laughs> Sometimes I wonder what he thinks about that would edge such longing onto his face. You, girl. One of these things is not like the other. Come again? The cactus. Those fearsome spines can prove a devil to remove. And the sap is often toxic. And a rose thorn can give you tetanus, but we still grow them. The cactus seems comparatively harmless. So you have me thinking it must be valuable. I was under the impression that you knew its price already. Your guess is as good as mine. The first time I saw this cactus was when I came back <laughs> from my break. So yeah, he got it for her. <laughs> and dropped it because he's a dummy. <laughs> Alright, we'll pin this one. In a loud bang, a visit to Dr. Barnes is in order. Ah, yes. Cactus in a cracked pot. Uh, exotic plants catalog. All right. Oh, I, I see. Okay, so there is... I, I understand now. I, I have to click one of each color, right? 
So character portrait, the strand missing, character portrait, Miss Fleming. And now we'll move here to that. So those two seem to be correct. <laughs> Mr. Barnes is in love with Miss Fleming. Okay, this is interesting. This this works. This I actually like this way more than Chapter One's uh, puzzle mechanics so far, right? Because it's actually giving us clues on like how to deduce and like showing us. Okay, here are the things we need to link in order to get to some sort of deduction, and gives you just enough, uh, I guess, view to see exactly where you need to go without it giving you the answer, which is great. All right. Hmm. I uh, think perhaps I have been chasing shadows. Do not despair, <laughs> Mr. Holmes. Even the best of us make mistakes. We better tell Mr. Barnes what we've learned. Yeah, this game plays a lot better than, than chapter Barnes, one did. I know what you did, and I know why you did it. I'm sorry, Mr. Holmes. I can't hear you very well from behind the door. You ordered a cactus from the plant catalogue and then left it for Mrs. Fleming as a gift. You place flowers in the window to get her attention and wear high heels <laughs> to appear taller and more desirable. You are her secret admirer. Just call him out, Sherlock. I couldn't read this morning's edition of The Strand because it was covered in soil and spines. I know you dropped a cactus on it and then fled. Barnes, it's Dr. Watson. Rest assured, we are not interested in disclosing your personal affairs to anyone, including Mrs. Fleming. Please come out. Uh, all right, then. So, you know what happened, then? I was on my way back from the post office, having picked up the cactus and some books. It was quite an awkward package, heavy, too. And when I got to your door, I dropped the cactus in your paper. Forgive me. I needed that paper to prove a theory and prevent a crime. Your actions were rather disruptive. Your clumsiness carrying the post is matched only by the clumsiness of your romantic gesture. Oh, it's true. What I an asshole. Sort of I'm not even sure if Mrs. Fleming noticed. As in most things in life, truth is the answer. Cease with the obtruse signals and anonymous gifts and simply talk to the woman. What is the worst that can happen? She rejects you, and you are freed from this endless purgatory. Okay, Sherlock ah. actually gave good advice for the first time yes, in his entire life. Correct, of course. <laughs> I do have a slight tendency to overthink things. Thank you. So, at last, we return to the matter of the paper. I'm investigating a string of burglaries. Did you perhaps read of any before the edition was spoiled? I don't recall, but you're welcome to read our copy for yourself. You had an issue of the Strand here all along? Well, I noticed it. Naturally. <laughs> I am a bookseller. I have a subscription to every magazine and newspaper in London. So you ought to be familiar with the concept of burying the lead. I... Oh, no. Uh, my apologies, Mr. Holmes. I'll make it up to you however I can. I am an expert on obscure languages and translation and... and uh, yes, yes, okay. Just give me the paper. <laughs> The Strand, September 28th, 1882. South Peter Explosion Rocks Docks. Locals at the Port of London had a rude awakening last night, with loud bangs and thick red smoke disturbing the peace. Merchant ship Moskva, isn't that just Russian for Moscow, uh, had docked at Pier N3 in the early evening, en route to Europe, when it was rocked by several concussive explosions. Port Authority is yet to comment on the incident, and it is unknown if any crew members were on board at the time. Eyewitnesses report seeing saltpeter leaking into the river, but with the area still off-limits to workers and the public, it may be some time before we have a full account of what transpired. Come, Dr. Watson. Let us put this matter behind us. Farewell, <laughs> Mr. Barnes. I hope to hear good news about you and Mrs. Fleming. <laughs> what, what a dingus. Jeez. Well, that was an utter waste of time. An assassination did seem rather unlikely. There was supposed to be another burglary. I was certain of it. Hmm. Something you wish to say? 
Well, only that you have a remarkable faculty for deduction and pattern recognition. And that perhaps, if ill-applied... I see things that are not there. Yes. It is London. There will always be burglaries. It doesn't have to mean anything. So it seems. Forgive me. Without something to occupy my mind, I turn into an entirely different animal. <laughs> Which brings us back to my news from earlier. I think I have a case for you, a real one. Truly? Indeed. Though perhaps not as thrilling as your stories from Cordona. A patient of mine, Captain Stenwick, told me that his servant disappeared. <laughs> Mystery I said time. I just the man to help. What do you say? Oh, Watson. Yes, I know it's not the most tantalizing mystery, nor the story to launch my writing career, but it's brilliant. Let's go. Oh, good. <laughs> well, his house is nearby. Come. Stenwick is just down the street from Barnes's bookshop. Okay. Uh, awesome. So, uh, Kettle says, wait, can other people see Watson this time? Yeah, so this is the Watson from the end of chapter one who comes in and is like, hey, I want to room and board with you. I'm a traumatized war vet. And Sherlock is like, if you'll pay rent. Um, and then, uh, as Kaw says, yes, this is indeed meet Watson, as opposed to, to imaginary Watson. Ooh, what is this? Oh, this is just, this is, what's this game called? Hopscotch, right? I don't know, it's something British. All right, Garrick Theater, starring vocals of Alexander Jordan. Wilson Pawn Shop, no returns, refunds, or reimbursement. Oh, there's a kitty. <laughs> Narik says, go back to doing drugs, Sherlock. It really would be good for him. He needs to chill out. I'm so excited uh, to learn if this game has, has combat in it. <gasps> a new case. The game is afoot. A model of a homely room and fireplace. Chimney bears a peculiar form, like it's meant to have something put inside. All right. We found a secret yard with a thingy to put inside. Looks like a factory to me. Okay. Another thingy goes inside there. Get the gears inside moving. Looks like putting something in the slot may get the gears inside to move. A small minecart. Endearing, if disturbing. Two wardrobe items acquired. Dang. Uh, okay. Let's look around. Children's clothes, judging by the size. So we have homeless kids potentially planning a bank heist? I don't know. Welcome to the hunt. Hey ho, street pigeons and roof ravens. Another treasure hunt is upon you. With a clue in hand, it's up to you to find all the dolls. All right, so we need to go towards the river then, right? Where are we right now? So it's gonna be down here, just using my mouse to point that out. Uh, right, because it's it's right along the river and it's along a curved right side. So it's, it's either here or here. Now I don't know exactly where we are. I think we're like right here, maybe. I like this painting, it's very dishonored looking. View. All right, um, let's see. We're gonna have to find all of that stuff. So let's go do that right now. Uh, so far, I'm, I'm way, way impressed. Uh, way impressed with this game so far. I already like it more than chapter one. Look at the cube map in there. That's kind of cool. Cool little internal view of that window. <laughs> Kettle says every dismal oil painting of a dock looks like Dishonored. Okay, man, don't call me out like that. 
Dishonored uh, would be an interesting series to run on the channel. I've already beaten them all. Um, uh, no, no, I haven't. I beat Dishonored 1 and 2. I forgot there was a third one, Death of the Outsider, right? Maybe one of these days I'll just do it on the channel. I, I, won't, I won't even record it. I'll just play through it. That could be fun. All right, need to figure out where the heck to go, though, because I am a little tiny bit lost. All right, let's go back to the bookstore real quick so that I can see, or I guess the flower shop, right? Map. We'll pin that real quick. And, okay, so we're over here. Aha, so I was in here, that's where I was. So I need to go towards Baker Street, past this junction, and then to the right. All right. I wish I had a compass just to see which direction is like east versus south. But much th now. This is the junction, okay. I'm really liking this. That's Stenwick's Manor, we'll go there in a minute. So this hub and spoke approach, I think, is already a huge improvement on chapter one's like needlessly large open world that wasn't really that interesting. May I ask you something? A lady doesn't know about such things. Oh no, horsey. Oh no, can I not go this way? Stenwick is just down the street from Barnes's bookshop. Did this horse like fall over and hurt itself or is it literally just chilling? <laughs> All right. Um Police wagon. I want to find a way to get down there. But I don't want to trigger anything at Stenwick's Manor yet. Can I go down this way? Probably not, right? Yeah, can't. Huh. Yeah, so if I wanted to go down this way, I would need to be able to get past the, the blockade like right here. So I think we'll need to go into Stenwick's Manor, um, just because it does have an opening out the back probably. Looks like right here maybe. We'll have to see. Inside the secret yard lie miniatures with mechanisms inside. I really don't want to miss out on this. That's the only thing I'm worried about. So let's let's run back there really quickly and just do another like quick once over. See what's available to us. Ooh, it's back here. Oh, that's the the Arthur Conan Doyle statue. Very neat. All right. Uh, oop, that's not the right way. So far, I, I'm I'm enjoying this a lot. I really like the environmental design too. It's a lot moodier and, but like, still, it's like better looking than Chapter One. I mean, part of that might have been, you know, playing on PS5, but uh, just overall, the game is is really. It's got a good sense of mood. <laughs> I'm really into it. All right, so we're gonna need some sort of gears, gear thing to put in these. Obviously, I don't think we can actually interact with that yet. Uh, this is a kill, children's bed. Padlocks have names etched onto them. Aha. Uh -huh. Charles. So the padlocks will probably be tied to the dolls that we find if there are three of them, and they'll probably give us things to put in there. That's my guess. But I don't think that we can we can actually go here yet, so. And yeah, uh, Raph says, I assume they have open areas to explore, but you can go, you can't just go wherever you want. Yeah, I think that works. That, that solves a major problem that the first game had, which is just that uh, it's never really clear where you're supposed to go or how to get there, and 95% of the map is genuinely just empty. <laughs> so, oh yeah. Once we clear the police blockade, we'll be able to move down here, so. How fun! How exciting! Granted, chapter one started off pretty goofy, so. Maybe this game will take a turn, I don't know, but so far I'm enjoying this a lot more. Is this lousy attitude of yours because of my altercation with Inspector Lockhart? Did he put you up to this? Sir, the Inspector has nothing to do with it. 
I'm telling you the same thing I tell anyone seeking a missing person. <clears throat> Good day, gentlemen. Forgive the intrusion. Captain Stenwick, this is my colleague Sherlock Holmes, the consulting detective I told you about. At last, a professional. This useless officer refuses to do anything about Kimmy here, my missing servant. What was your name again? I shall be certain to inform your superiors. Sergeant Ruffles. It is my superiors who made this decision, sir. Hmm. Raph asks, is this game rated M? Uh, because the original game has gruesome imagery. I have no idea. I bought it on Steam. I haven't looked at a game rating in like 10 years. <laughs> have there been other disappearances lately? Of course, here and there. But when life is tough and opportunity comes knocking, you can't blame those who answer. Why has the police department decided not to help? We investigate murders, thefts, fraud, arson, real crimes. A servant walking away from his master is not our highest priority. That said, if we find Kimahia breaking the law, we'll be sure to notify Captain Stenwick. Now, I must be off. Best of luck in your search. <laughs> you heard that, didn't you? The way that man spoke to me. I shall need your written testimony. Then we can lodge a complaint. Captain, perhaps Mr. Holmes' time is better spent learning about your servant so that he may begin his investigation. Ah, yes. Quite right. Fire away. Huh. Tell me about Kimi here. He's foreign. A Maori. All the way from New Zealand. Biggest man you've ever seen. And as strong as two. Dark hair and fearsome tattoos. He doesn't speak a whit of English. Never bothered to learn. But I made do with pointing. I invested a lot of money in him, so he must be found. May I see your servant's bedroom? His shack is in the garden. You can't miss it. Did you search the room? Of course, but only to check he wasn't lying dead inside. Everything seemed normal at a glance. When did you last see your servant? Kimmy here normally brings me the morning papers, but yesterday I had to get them myself. He must have escaped the night before yesterday. I take it this is the first time Kimmy here has vanished? Undoubtedly. The man seemed terrified of the city. I think it was all the noise. He never left this estate. Should he cause any damage, I will bear the responsibility, for it was I who rescued him from savagery and brought him here to England in the first Oof. place. Oof. What a way to phrase that. Is there any reason Kimahir may have left? I should think not. He had all he could have wanted. Gainful employment, new clothes, and all the cabbage he could eat. All the cabbage he could eat. <laughs> Did Kimahir make off with anything of value? Heavens no. I would have mentioned it to Sergeant Ruffles. Still, he must have fled with some money on his person. No, no. I kept his wages in my safe. For security. All right, Captain. I think I have enough to get started. We shall first take a look around the mansion. Go ahead. I'll be here, mentally drafting my complaint. So yeah, I have, I have no idea what the ESRB on this game is. I was just trying to look it up. Uh, on GOG, it says teen, but the original is mature, so I don't know. Couldn't tell you. All right, Stemwick's Mansion is located on Barn Street. I wish it would clear old clues. All right. Servant was made to live in a shack in the garden. I did know this. Oh, are the cops gone yet? If they are, then I want to ignore this uh, immediately and go on the hunt. All right, cops do not appear to have left. The horsey's back on its legs, though, so maybe we're making some progress and getting this cleared out. Sup, horsey? Nay. All right. Kimihia is an interesting name. I, I have no idea what the origin of that name is. Oh, he's Maori. Gotcha. I didn't even notice that. I must have blanked out on that that moment while I was looking up what the rating of the game was. 
All right, there's nothing here. Oh. When I see a green circle, I can... Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head. <laughs> Alright. Uh, what else is there? What can I look at? Where is the other... Where's the other thing? Can't look up there. I have a very limited range I can actually look at right here. Is there anything else to look at? Impressive. The sack of grain retained the shape of an impact. Someone hit their head here. There we go. A small navy spyglass. Interesting. Concentration helps you pick up smaller details about the world around you. When you see a wavy green circle, press right bumper to observe the object more closely. So I wonder if that will show up in this one or not. A Maori nose flute. Ngurus, they're called. Clothes made of hessian. Sten with snakes as servant so live in a tool shed. No air coming Think through. you know someone? Is this a tanifa, a Maori water spoon, or something else? Ah, huh. neat. Either way, it's giving me chills. Button chops. The remains of a meal. Yummy. A heavy chemical odor. Lend me your nose, doctor. Ah. I'll never forget that smell after my time in Afghanistan. That's an opioid, Mr. Holmes, a narcotic. Ah, uh, Sherlock would not need Watson's uh, nose to figure out what that is. The ashes are long since cold. With enough clues, Sherlock can use imagination to reconstruct the past. Press right bumper to see imagination nodes. Where are they? begin to recreate an accurate version of events. Oh, I see. Okay, so that's what they look no like. Coming through it. All right, so he was sniffing an opioid. And then he came over here and tripped and flattened his face into a thing of grain. Uh, how do I... Huh. All right, that's all I can do. Am I missing something? I'm probably missing a clue somewhere, right? This is much more of a uh, mystery game than, than chapter one, which didn't really have the mystery mechanics fully, I see, okay, organized in there. Have left these tracks. They seem fresh. This uh -huh. is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. That's also good to know. Can't interact with the Taniwa. Tanifa. Aha, uh -huh. what's this? Ah, he hotboxed his room. Rag reeks of smoke. <laughs> Someone plugged the chimney. He got too baked. All right, we have one more node to find. There's the key. I guess it won't let me interact with it yet, though. All right, 
right, where is the imagination node here? Can't actually interact with that. Clothes made of Hessian. Yes, Stenwick is no angel, so but he's one of my few clients. Please try to remain courteous. A, ma a nose a flute. Interesting. Is there anything here I have forgotten to interact with? All right, nothing there. Imprint sacked, uh, imprint shaped like a human head on a sack of grain. All right. Aha, I see. Oh no, that's just the other one. Where is the other imagination node? What am I missing here? <laughs> reeks of smoke someone plugged the chimney hey, he's hot boxing his house we knew that all right we got to find the key let's go talk to what's his name about the hessian clothes I came across a pile of Hessian clothes in the shack. Are they Kimahir's? Yes. I had to give him something to clothe himself. He seemed unfazed by his bare skin, but I found it <laughs> distracting. Distracting, huh? He's got a huge D. Alright, uh... The door to your garden has an interesting lock. Yes, I have uncommon locks on every door of my mansion. It makes them harder to pick. Kimmy here and I both had a set of keys. I'll need to borrow them. No, you'll need to do what I tell you to do. Examine the garden. Why are you still here? If you find my man, I have a marvelous whiskey with your name on it. All right. Uh, pair of fresh parallel tracks. All right, so this is telling me that there is, yeah, it's just that one imagination node still. And there's stuff to look at here. Can I actually investigate this? I cannot. It was a wagon wheel of some kind. Oh, there's more. Okay, I see. Someone moved a cart to this spot and then took it elsewhere. Can't see it anywhere in the garden. All right. Yeah, so there are multiple, I need multiple nodes. That's what this is telling me is that there's like, so for each of these different imagination nodes, there are multiple different options. And once I get certain clues, it will allow me to put different nodes together, I think. Aha, yes. Oh, okay, I get it. A scrap of Hessian. This is this is actually surprisingly more These difficult. Were sturdy boxes. It would have required a serious blow to break them. All right. So let's see. Doing that, I now have this node. No, it's not. <laughs> it's not that order. It's the other order cuz he walked out and tripped and planted his face in there. I can't go through it yet though, so. Maybe when he like busts his nose, when I run into him and his nose is busted or something, it will let me. This disappearance see. is intriguing now. I cannot make head nor tail. Clothes made of Hessian. He's huh. so nice. So exciting. Alright. Can't go out the back. Okay, yeah, I, un I understand this mechanic now. That's very cool. I'm gonna, I'm kind of, in I'm excited about the fact that the, uh, the different version, uh, not the different version, the different difficulty levels actually matter in this game compared to the original, where they just kind of didn't work. Hmm. 
Hmm. Looks like a knee print. A shoe print, roughly size 11, with a worn out sole. These are a workman's boots. Someone knelt here. The amount of chewing tobacco suggests they were waiting a while. Amazing, Mr. Holmes. To read the ground like an open book. Spyglass on the floor of Kimihia's shack. Let's go talk to what's his face about it. Are you joking? Why would I know this? Where on earth are you going with this? Has Kimihia ever indulged in tobacco? No, the man doesn't even drink. Are you certain? I found chewing tobacco in the garden. I controlled Kimihia's expenses since he struggled with the currency. I would have known if he used tobacco. Hmm, struggled with the currency or because you're a miser? <laughs> I thought you were meant to be intelligent. Do you happen to know Kimihia's shoe size? I wouldn't have the foggiest, but well, I'm sure it was enormous. Not that it matters. He spent his life barefoot. Despite my best efforts, he simply did not take to shoes. Alright, where's the spyglass? Are you joking? Why would I know this? Is this spyglass familiar? I don't recognize it. Could it be Kimahir's, perhaps? I doubt it. I never saw him with it. Nor could I suggest how he might have come by it. Okay. So it must have been someone else. Oh, we have way more nodes now. I see. <laughs> Excellent. All right, which one is this? Oh, this is the last one. Okay. Uh huh. Not Kimi Hia. It's yes, this guy. Okay, what's the next one? Oh, no. Yeah. Okay, I see. All right, so we were right about the way that mechanic worked. I'm just looking at the different options here. All right, so someone, oh, someone put the opioid in there. Gotcha. Still doesn't seem completely correct to me. We are still missing some clues. So yeah, he was drugged and pulled out. I was kind of assuming that Kimihia would just did the opioid and then fell 
because this is a face imprint and it looks like he fell backwards so that doesn't seem right to me the hessian clothes belong to what's his name and they're on the floor though so i guess he must have been dragged and he got stuck so that seems right and then I mean, I think the answer is that he must be... Oh, no, he's not doing the narcotics. He's with his spyglass. There we go. So that's probably correct. So something bad happened there. Lock with an unusual keyhole. This lock is quite unusual. It appears that the key should be bent to the right. Kamihia always wears clothes made of sacks. We already knew that. Captain Stomach's testimony. I still want to find the key or uh, be able to get around the back because that will give us the answer that we're looking for for everything, right? Let's go do that. What was that? Something changed right when I walked by here. I heard it in my headphones. No idea. This dreary rain is making a miserable day even worse. All right, let's see if we can go out back now. Doesn't seem like it, but it's worth a little bit of a shot. Huh. So we're still missing the final scene. Okay, so this is saying I need to pin something and it will give me concentration for it. So maybe with this pinned, I'll be able to l interact with the keys in the shack. Let's try that. Oh yeah, okay. Bent to the left, not to the right. All right. And he took the one to the right. There we go. Surveilling from afar, the intruder waited for a window of opportunity. When Kimihir went to sleep, the man crept up to the shack and slipped narcotics down the chimney pipe, then blocked it with a cloth. Kimihir inhaled the sedative and fell into a deep sleep. The intruder tried to move him, but the man was heavier than expected. The intruder fell on the sack and dropped his spyglass. In order to transport the servant, he had to use the cart. The final challenge was opening the garden door. Luckily for our intruder, Kimahir had the key in his shack. Remarkable. It makes total sense. We did it. All right. So we managed to solve this part of the crime. So Kimahir was abducted. Interesting. Very interesting. Interesting.